Hey, what's happening? My name is D, and welcome back to another episode of Book Reviews from a Regular Dude. Before we get into the video, I got a couple of announcements. So firstly, somebody was asking me about sending me books instead of giving me book recommendations. And so I set up a PO box or a PMB. So if you want to send me books, if, if you're an author, especially if you're an indie author and you want a little more hype around your projects, you can send books to this address. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll put it here or something. Secondly, I know that I'm a ways away, but I would still like to hit the milestone of reaching a thousand subscribers. And when I do, I'm going to do a video with my wife. We'll be giving each other like one of our favorite books to read and then reviewing them together. We have super different taste in like books and media and stuff like that. So I think it's gonna be really funny. And my wife is like a really funny, thoughtful person. So she's gonna have some good things to say. So if you wanna see like a little couples review video, definitely hit the subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. And I guess you could tell a friend or tell your mom or tell your lover or tell your enemy, whatever, just get the word out. And thirdly, I didn't have a third thing. <laughs> so let's get into the reason why we're all here. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Legend Board by Dion Tracy. Nope, nope, Tracy Dion. <laughs> This is prompted by a comment from my last book review. So Legend Born is like a YA fantasy novel. It's like a retelling. No, it's not really a retelling. It's like a, it's like a remix of the Arthurian legend. Honestly, I'm gonna do a bad job of describing it, so I'm just gonna you know read the premise. After her mother dies in an accident, 16-year-old Bree Matthews wants nothing to do with her family, memories, or childhood home. A residential program for bright high schoolers at UNC Chapel Hill seems like the perfect escape until Bree witnesses a magical attack her very first night on campus. A flying demon feeding on human energies, a secret society of so-called legend-born students that hunt the creatures down, and a mysterious teenage mage who calls himself a Merlin and who attempts and fails to wipe Bree's memories of everything she saw. The mage's failure unlocks Bree's own unique magic and a buried memory with a hidden connection. The night her mother died, another Merlin was at the hospital. Now that Bree knows there's more to her mother's death than what's on the police report, she'll do whatever it takes to find out the truth, even though that means infiltrating the Legendborn as one of their initiates. She recruits Nick, a self-exiled Legendborn with his own grudge against the group. The reluctant partnership pulls them deeper into the society's secrets and closer to each other. But when the Legendborn reveal themselves as the descendants of King Arthur's knights and explain that a magical war is coming, Bree has to decide how far she'll go for the truth and whether she should use her magic to take the society down or join the fight. From what I can tell, this book is pretty popular. Pretty high ratings on Goodreads, lots of reviews. I think right around the time I started like consuming bookish content on TikTok, this book was just popping off, and so it was coming up like a lot. Some of my mutuals on Book Talk were hyping the hell out of this thing. They had me believing that it was gonna change the way I read books. It was gonna change my fucking life. So I think it was like late 2022 I read this and uh, my life didn't change. And then I, and I read it again this past week just to refresh my memory and my life didn't change again. And like in Legendborn's defense, the bar was set absurdly high like my expectations couldn't meet my expectations this is kind of why i feel like as soon as a book is hyped it's overhyped people will make these like wild claims about what a book's gonna do for you instead of just letting the book do its thing you feel me and also i'd like to acknowledge like a personal bias i have against this book and i don't know if bias is the right word and it's not really even against this book but it is something that i think affected my personal enjoyment of the book. Whether we want to or not, we all come to books and stories with our own personal perspective, our own like baggage, our own trauma, our own pain, whatever. And some of my baggage is that while I've never like lost a parent, I've lost several close friends to car accidents, one of whom was like an older brother to me and honestly without his love and friendship, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, my mother-in-law passed away a couple years ago and that was really hard for my wife to go through. So we're like no strangers to grief. So, you know, grief is a pretty heavy theme in this book. And so I found this very triggering and frustrating to read. Also, this is a YA fantasy and some would argue that I'm not a young adult anymore. And it's geared toward like adolescent girls. I, th I think. And I'm not an adolescent girl. I've never been an adolescent girl. And I imagine that this text resonates more strongly with its targeted demographic. So when I say that Legend Born just isn't for me, I mean, like, I literally don't think it was written for me. Although I guess, like, no book is written specifically for me. 
unless I wrote my own. Anyways, on to the review. Let's talk about things that I like. First and foremost, I think that this book brings up really important conversations about racism and patriarchy. I think it touches on racism more so, but because Brie is a young woman, patriarchy is brought up as well. I imagine that this is really meaningful and impactful for young black girls and women, and so I'm really happy that this book exists for that reason. And I know that Legendborn isn't the only, like, fantasy novel that features a young black woman protagonist that's talking about like racism and patriarchy but you know I, I think there just can't be enough of those also Dion's not like beating around the bush with these themes like this is very I guess explicitly stated but I think that's a good thing you know it's not like sugar-coated for white readers let's just dive into it nothing is left up for interpretation and I respect that unlike the book in my last review The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter the queer representation here doesn't feel like an afterthought. It feels very thoughtful and purposeful. There isn't like a ton in here. It's not like a super gay book or anything like that, but it is like there and it doesn't feel shoehorned. And because of this queer representation, I think that Dion touches on intersectionality in a very like subtle but effective way. There's like one or two white queer characters who are marginalized for their queerness but still engage in oppressive behaviors against Brie because of their whiteness. So I think that's just like a really good way to show how you can be oppressed and still oppress. And I think that's something that we all need to acknowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like acknowledge within ourselves. I really like that this book is kind of like reverse Doctor Strange, reverse The Last Samurai. Because I really can't stand that trope of like a white guy goes to a foreign land and learns this like ancient art that's practiced by the locals there and he becomes like the best at it within a couple of weeks or some shit like that. Legendborn is that but like flipped on his head. I think it does like a really accurate realistic depiction of how like white people would respond if that were to happen. I also love the premise of like the secret society that Brie infiltrates. I love a secret society secretly fighting invisible monsters. It reminds me of a couple animes, Bleach, Chainsaw Man, and one of my personal favorites, Jujutsu Kaisen. And I love the manga for Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen, so, you know, if you're looking for recommendations, there you go. <laughs> also, I think it's well established now, like I think I mentioned in every video, I'm a big fan of anime. But if you find my, like, comparisons or references annoying, uh, I'm not gonna stop and you are more than welcome to leave. I think that anime and manga is literature too, and I like seeing commonalities in like different mediums, different genres and styles of storytelling. Ooh, this is also kind of like a little Men in Black. I wonder who Will Smith would play in a Legendborn movie. I guess the dad, right? Even though it's um first person narration and I'm not crazy about first person narration, I really like Tracy Dion's writing. Some of these lines could be read at a poetry slam and I compete in poetry slam so I know what I'm talking about. Although I will admit the audiobook narrator must have also picked up on that and kind of reads it like she's performing slam poetry. And it, it's it's a bit much. I, I don't love that. It, it kind of took me out of it a little bit. And I think whenever we're talking about fantasy, it's really important to discuss like how the magic system or the power system plays into the story. And this magic system is, I think, really well thought out. And I really, really appreciate how Dion kind of gave us a global sense of how magic is practiced in different cultures. Well, like we only see two different practices, but it's addressed that like all over the world, different cultures have their different way with it. And that makes it feel more real, even though it's, you know, magic. Now, I haven't read the sequel yet. I will if this video does better than my last video. I think a love triangle is being established here. And if so, is a good love triangle. That's how you do it, son. Power dynamic and relation dynamics between Bree and Nick and Cell or Selwyn or whatever his name is. It's super interesting and there's a bunch of tension and I really like that. And also the fact that like the seeds were just planted for the triangle. It didn't go full bloom in one book, I think is is pretty tasteful. There isn't a ton that I'm like super conflicted about with this book, except that I, I don't love the chosen one trope, except in Avatar The Last Airbender. That's an exception. And I will be talking about that in depth in another video, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. But you know, I, I don't hate tropes. Like, I don't think, 
I can because of all the things I'm a fan of. I don't hate tropes in and of themselves. I think that they need to be executed well and kind of have like a unique spin on them. And Dion definitely has like a really unique spin on the Chosen One trope. Definitely flips it on its head and subverts it. And it is very well done. So even though I hate that trope most of the time, uh, this is cool. This is really cool. It's almost like Brie is the Chosen One in spite of what everyone says is the prophecy. Now let's talk about things that I don't like. And honestly, the main thing that I don't like is the characters. I think they all kind of fall on a spectrum that ranges from kind of shitty to really fucking shitty, like just the absolute worst. Except William, protect him at all costs. And there's like a couple side characters that get brought up and have some dialogue, but they're like barely there. So there isn't enough of them, like I don't get enough of them to really have an opinion on them. Like, I really don't like Brie. I said in my last video, I think that characters that are really focused on revenge or on what they've lost can be kind of hit and miss. Like, they can be hard to like and hard to root for. And I think for me personally, Brie's singular focus and the way she kind of treats people who are just trying to help her rubs me the wrong way. And the way she kind of drags this guy, Nick, into her investigation, uh... I thought that was pretty shitty, <laughs> and I get it. She's a kid, lost her mom, trauma, pain, all that. I understand, and I don't like her. I feel for her, and I don't like her. And I know that she regrets and has remorse for a lot of the decisions that she makes and how she treats people, but, like, damage is dumb, my boy. Like, And again, I think a lot of my disdain for this character actually just comes from the way the narrator, like, portrays her. I, I didn't like it, and I, I wish that I had read this physically, because I probably would have a different opinion. <laughs> also, Bria's shitty friends. I, I don't like the best friend character, Allison or whatever. Judgmental busybody. Nick's got some anti-racism education to do. And I think he needs to read The Will to Change by Bell Hooks. Cell, so, um, I don't know, you like magical Bruce Wayne to me. I don't know, you should also read Bell Hooks. And I get that everyone's had like a tragic childhood or whatever, you know, same. Still don't like him. And it's tough because I really wanted to like this book but I just don't because I think A, I'm the whole time I'm triggered and upset because I'm remembering what it felt like to lose my best friends. And B, I just don't like this main character. I'm rooting for her. I want her to win. But also whenever she like feels bad for something that she did, I'm like, good. Yeah, she's a fictional teenager. Um, there's no need for beef, but I don't like her and I blame the narrator. Honestly, for me, this book is just so fine. It's written really well. It's a cool premise. I hate these characters. I'm not gonna do a star rating, you know, like I, I don't really like them. They're fine for story graph and uh, Goodreads, but I don't think they tell you much and, and how people score is so subjective that I think, you know, it, it doesn't give you a clear idea of what someone's opinion actually was of the book. So I'm just gonna stick with my three summary questions. So was it good? Yes. I think it's really well written. Did I enjoy it? No, I, I read this as fast as I possibly could just so I would, you know, be done with it. <laughs> would I recommend it though? Yes. If you are a black person who loves fantasy and feel that you aren't like well represented in fantasy, especially like that high fantasy, like knights, dragons type of bullshit, you, I think you should definitely read this. And if you're a non-black person who loves fantasy, and has the maturity and inner resolve to have a conversation about racism and how it can feel to be a black person occupying like a largely white space. And if you're willing to have a conversation about the lack of like black representation in high fantasy, then yeah, definitely read this. And if you're not, don't. Oh, God, I'm so tired. I usually record these like early afternoon on a Saturday. I'm doing this on a Thursday night. <laughs> but I think that's about it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to the end. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Like I said at the top of the video, I'm trying to reach the goal of a thousand subscribers. And once I do, I'm going to do a fun celebration video with my wife. We're going to review each other's favorite books. We have really different tastes in books, so I think it's going to be really funny and a really good time. If you like these reviews, you like what I'm doing on this channel, and you would like to support me, you can buy me a coffee. Or, or, or a Kofi. I don't know. The link is in the description. If there's a book you would like my thoughts on, I'm making a list of books that I'm going to read and or review. So, you know, just throw those recommendations in the comments. 
And again, if you would like to send me anything, my P.O. box will be like written in the description as well. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is D. Don't fret. I'll see you next time. Peace.